Across the world, the clock ticks down. We've had the answer for 30 years, and it is not remarkable that candidate after candidate advocates change, the prescription of which, if any, always evades qualification and even addressing the fundamental issue. Unless the people of the world stand for more, change will always be retention of the system of exploitation. No purported leader of the world will second-guess the printing house. No president, no chancellor, no prime minister, not even a dictator will rethink its unascended existence except to take that unearned profit for himself. The purpose of privatizing a currency of obfuscation and unearned profit all for a select few is obvious, particularly in its opposition to preserving instead the private and distinct right of each private individual to issue their promise to pay. There is no mistaking the nature of the imposed currency, nor is it a mistake it is imposed upon us or that it can only produce the consequences it does. Does President Obama refuse to stand for the people because he already understands the imposed currency is just? Is that what George W. Bush did? Absolutely not. On the contrary, Obama thus confesses either not to understand that currency or to defend it likewise only by evasion. He would have to rethink the nature of the present currency if he is ever to serve us. If he intended to do that, why would his economic policy team return a requested proposition of mathematically perfected economy without even opening it? Why have they no public argument against mathematically perfected economy? Do all the members of Congress refuse to answer to the one proposition of true solution because they understand the imposed currency is just? Absolutely not. Nor is that what President Wilson said once he came to lament one of the most grievous miscarriages of representation in history, a wrong which only waits to be righted and which will inevitably be righted. Now these unascended currencies just simply happen to prevail upon every nation of the world? Can just one of the exalted, unelected administrators of these imposed publishing houses even demonstrate how such a currency will not inherently, inevitably, and irreversibly multiply artificial indebtedness into terminal debt and utter failure? Absolutely not. And if you are even tempted to say otherwise, look around you, for all that they do right now, itself, only multiplies insoluble, unjustifiable debt and its dispossession of us all the further. Now then, as surely as utter failure is inherent and inevitable, there is no safety from the events before us, even for the few of us who may have avoided personal indebtedness. All of us are falling, for what was possible yesterday for all of us is not possible today but by solution. By the dictate of unascended dispossession, we will fall soon to artificial indebtedness, not just our own, but of our workforces, our markets, of the artificial indebtedness to which every unit of the printing press makes itself subject, and even thus to the artificial indebtedness of non-representative government funded to power, as a matter of course, by the same printing houses expressly to deny us even away from fatal oppression. Wake, people. Neither a self-ruling populace or a truly free people have any justification for ignorance, apathy, or failing ever to distinguish the common principles which serve all of us equally. At all times, a truly free, self-determined people are not just vigilant, with an always wide open ear listening for the least whisper of tangible abuse of power. A truly free, self-determined people unite always because there is one and one principle only which serves all of them. 
And so they unite instantly upon tangible abuse of power, because any and all abuse of power left standing means itself that abuse of power can stand, which is why and how all the present events unfold before us. By the yardsticks of ignorance, irresponsibility, or mere indifference, then, each of us is either a foe or highway to abuse of power. We fight and we stand, undeterred for actual liberty and justice, or we are zombies to its loss, usually, of course, hoping to save our own hides for the same futilities by which mankind has always, only, ever slipped backward. Nonetheless, we are in this together, and it is our duty and obligation not just to ourselves, but to all the rest of us even more so than you have so far stood for yourselves, for each of us to decide our lot. It is your duty and obligation now, not just to understand what is against us, but to take sides. You must take sides with all the conviction you have for anything and everything because everything is what's at stake, here and now. And because if you don't take sides here and now, and with all the conviction every good thing deserves, then you are already on the wrong side. Because it is you, zombie, who lay down for the printing houses to travel over us. All that you see already so much as belongs to them, merely for publishing debts which soon exceed every such thing. They already own what you think you own, and the rules of their game are rigged that you will give it up to them. They already own you. If you are not standing against this now, then for your iniquities, they already own all that you and even your children and their children will produce. This isn't because these mere printing houses do not mean to collect on that insoluble, ever-escalating debt. And yet all this, all that you see, only falls to them now, and now finally, to their own consternation, in a way from which they themselves can only confiscate less from you, because the nature of these people, and the process by which they intentionally impose oppression, have a great lowly flaw. The utter failure before you is an accident of their own deceptions of their own deceitful hearts. But their oppression is no more an accident or anomaly than worldwide usurpation. And the fact that pretenders, comprising the many non-representative governments across the world, stand against you. Not only are all these things intended, as you see, they who do all this make no preparation whatever but to oppress us forever. Any of you who ever truly desired rectitude then would have seen all this long ago, even in the mere proposition that such an abomination be called economy. What they and you call economy never had a principle. And if zombies and printing houses are the answer to thy kingdom come, what you will continue to call economy never will. You who settle for less only know the foes of justice in the inevitable event of your own end, because neither they nor their process know when to stop taking. Like them, their process must take more and ever more, and never by deserving it, because that is what they are made of. That process, representing utter selfishness so great it is fatal to all the rest of us, never rectitude, drives all that they do. Whether this be in your country, what your country is said falsely to represent, or to do for you, or whether these facades of rectitude be carried out in any other country of the world, where, of course, amidst and at the foundation of all such turmoil, in the shadow of the overt facades, usury will be made the cornerstone of what will equally errantly be called freedom 
and self-determination.